All right, we're back with video number two of this video series. Again, we're, we're working on carving a cowboy or a figure just out of a block of wood. And what I want to focus on primarily is how do you do this without a lot of power tools? I know a lot of younger friends who are into, into wood, carv wood carving and they'll, they'll struggle with a young family in trying to make sure that they have the tools that some of us older people who don't have young kids at home anymore. And they go, well, yeah, I can't afford a sander. I can't afford a bandsaw. I can't afford a grinder. I can't afford, I, I, I get it perfectly. I was there at one time as well. As a teacher, we don't seem to make a lot of money until you've been in teaching for quite some time. And then, then it gets the door your living is a little bit more comfortable and you can afford these things. I was lucky enough to, to get some of those on eBay, on sale, on Craigslist, whatever. But anyway, we want to focus on getting to here. So I, I took this guy. You may have seen him in the last video. I had him on. Well, that's pretty dusty. He's been sitting there. Well, I had him on this one where I had the, the feet screwed in and a little aside about screwing the figure in or, or doweling it in you see a lot of people that'll dowel them in and I got I, I've tried that as well um, and it works perfectly when you know what you're doing and it doesn't work perfectly when you don't know because it'll be a little bit screwy I like using the screws because it's a little stronger I've seen a lot of dowels I've had to replace or, or fix a lot of carvings that had had dowels holding them together the argument is if it's screwed then and you drop it then the screw is stronger than the carving it'll break the carving off of the legs valid point perfect point <laughs> you can get around that by not dropping your carving simple as that don't drop the stuff on the floor make sure it's protected but i like the screw because i can be a little bit off just a hair and and when i screw this in if i make a smaller hole here than the screw then when i screw that in it pulls it down to the wood what you don't want is to make it seem like he's just barely floating off the ground off the, the the base simply because you you didn't do it right and if the if the dowel is just a little bit off it's hard to get that all the way down there without making that dowel smaller and smaller and smaller because the holes drilled sideways I, I saw someone on facebook the other day that had a neat little acrylic base that they they had dr holes drilled in and you could drill exactly where you wanted that also assumes that every carving is going to have the same stance and mine don't i make them different almost every single time but anyway i took him off of this base we'll lay that off to the side because here's where we want to go i took the liberty of doing a quick drawing and you can see the hat stretches off a little bit and so in this guy I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to shorten these legs just a little bit in order to get that hat we're only talking about a quarter of an inch not a big deal but I can easily fit this in there with short I don't want to shorten the foot I want to move that foot up so basically I would move this up and when I draw it what I want to do is start with the feet down here center that thing so I don't have to take off a lot that I don't need to I want to put his feet in here and then what I would simply do if you'll see I got the top of the hat off I'd simply just move that down a little bit that allows me to say okay there's my feet there's my belly and, and I want to stress that this carving this project is infinitely customizable if you want skinny make him skinny if you want taller make him taller if you want longer shorter fatter legs you make it any way you want but I'm going to adjust as I need. And then when I pull that up, there he is. Easy enough to do. And if you're like me, you like a little bit darker lines, I'm going to go back and I'm going to trace over those. This is, like I said, it's customizable and it's also changeable. If you don't want him that fat, make him skinnier. If you don't want this head this big, don't make it that big. If you want the hat to be smaller, baseball cap, something else, it's your carving. You do whatever you want to with it. And so because I'm not, I'm not worried about a bandsaw going out, if I was in a bandsaw, I'd be cutting these out. So if I did this and then put the other one on here, by the time I cut this out, I would want to cut this out because these two surfaces make it flat. By the time I cut that out, whatever I drew on this side is gone. So I'm going to have to... Um, play it by ear. Basically when we go to carve all of this and all of this 
is what we're going to cut out. So we're taking this stuff off. Everything that I'm going to make black, at least on this profile, is going to be cut out. For those of you that aren't used to doing this, this is a good way to see where my cuts are going to be. Now, if you want to keep it straight because you're not going to do this on the other side and because we had to adjust up and down a little bit, you don't want to necessarily flip that over and do another one here because now that we've made adjustments, we're going to be off. And so the easiest way to do this is the stakes take some kind of straight edge that you have and just transfer those lines over. I use a pencil. Let me find my pencil there. And all I'm going to do is mark. Here's the hat. Here's the hat. Here's the nose and the bottom of the nose. Here's the chin. Here's the top of the boot. And if I can, if I have a, I don't have a, I don't have a, T-square here, but I would just simply transfer those lines straight over. Try to keep them as straight as you can because this keeps symmetry in your carving. Interesting, I got the new chip chats just yesterday. There's an article in there about what judges look for. If you don't have that article, the chip chats, I'd suggest you find someone that does because that article is going to be very valuable to you. It talked about symmetry and in car caricature, that can mean absolutely nothing and it can kill a carving if you don't have symmetry because what I don't want is when I turn it over and we do this carving this 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 outline here what I don't want is one ear here and one ear up there I don't want one ear to be big and one ear to be small so there are some parts of symmetry you have to remain true to when you're doing caricature carving. You can't just throw it all out the window and say, well, because it's a caricature carving, he can have two sizes of hands or whatever. There's truth to that, but there's also reality. The reality is when you're doing caricature carving, that's primarily what I do, so that's what I want to speak about. When you're doing caricature carving, you can stretch symmetry and you can stretch proportions as far as you want. You go too far, you stretch into the cartoony part. You, you stay within the caricature part. And if you've ever seen a caricature artist at the fair or somewhere sit down and draw a likeness of the person, you know that that drawing they did looks like that person, but they've exaggerated something. Maybe they have darker eyebrows. Maybe they have big eyes. Maybe they have dimples. They've, they've emphasized that, and that's what we want to do here. What's my emphasis on this guy? Big hat, big nose, big chin, big belly big feet I could I could shrink all these down as well but I like them that way those are caricature pieces that I use that are very valuable for what we're doing and so we've done the front lines over here we're gonna do these back lines as well because here's the top of the back of the hat and here's the bottom here's where it touches and the the, the back portion of the buttocks and so we're going to stretch those lines over as well. Lines don't have to be perfectly straight, but, you know, straight enough-ish. And so again, if I transfer this over here, here's that line at the top of that hat. Here's this line at the bottom of the back of the hat. Here's the, the slope in, and here's the slope out the same thing here here's the top of the boot here's where I'm going to make an indentation between the head and the body here is the bottom of the nose here's the top of the nose for the eye socket here's the hat the bottom of the hat and here's the top of that hat I'm not going to worry about over here because I can keep it fairly straight here and if you like drawing dark marks this part is going to come out all of this is going to come out. I told you I'd show you what tools I'm using. This is a Sharpie. I'm not making any money off Sharpies, but I find them to be good. I'm not making any money off of this. I'm not, I'm not to the point where YouTube is paying me anything for ads or anything, so 
I'm just somebody out here just trying to help you because somebody helped me at one time. I want to help you too as well. But anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. Remember, this is going to be cut out. This is going to be slightly cut out, not much. And all the way back to the belly. If you decide to do the belly, these are the parts where it's, the belly is going to touch. And then this part is going to be cut out as well. All right, I got about four minutes left, so let me show you the tools I'm going to use to do this. I don't, I have a bag full of tools. I, my wife tells me I carry around too many, but um, I don't think too many and tools should be in the same sentence, but she gets to make that case. She's been with me for 30 something years, and so she gets to make that argument whether we agree or not. I'm going to use primarily as a wood removal tool, a chisel. This is my Stubi, Stubi, made in Austria. The steel in here is just about as good as you can make it. I say that because I also have another one made by Drake. This is my oldest tool. I've had this tool as long as I started carving. It was the first tool I bought. I bought this tool, I bought a gouge, and I bought a straight knife. And those straight knife I've retired it because it's getting really really thin and flexible and I don't want to break it I leave it there as posterity but anyway I use two gouges I use a v-tool of some sort it's another drake although I've got several others those are drake gouge and there's a stubai gouge and I have flex cut gouges as well so I use uh, those very heavily so I need a V-tool, I, I need a gouge, fishtail gouge, sorry. I'm going to use various different sizes of gouges. Some call them veiners. This one's a number six or a nine. I don't know which one it is. I would say it's a nine. And I'm also going to use straight bladed knives of any sort. The bigger the better. And so the biggest one I have in here is my Helby. This Helby rough out knife is just really tip top. It's right up there with Drake. It's right up there with um, Helby, not Helby, OCC, Denny Tools. Um, and it's right up there with another tool that I got some time ago, the Pinewood Forge um, Harley Refsol knife made by Dell Stubbs. Any of those will work, but we'll be using big tools to start off with, and then we'll eventually morph into smaller, more flexible tools. But right now, these are the tools we're gonna use. You asked if I wouldn't do it with a power, and let's make sure that we don't do it with a power. You don't need to cut all this out. It sure saves a lot of time, but you know maybe your money's worth a lot more than your time, and you've got a lot of time. And so if you're wanting to follow along this, this project, we're gonna use all of this with, with just hand tools. We're not going to use any power other than to carve out right in the middle where the feet are, where the, where the shoes are going to go. So we'll be carving that right somewhere in here. Below the belly and above the, above the feet, we'll be carving a couple of holes through there with our drill, which is no big deal. Power drill is one thing, but if you've got one of those hand crank ones, that works too. If you don't want to do that, this is easily done just as well with a gouge and a knife. You can dig in there as well. It's just, it's, it's more work, so... Anyway, that's the end of the second video. We're at 14 and a half minutes, 14 minutes, something like that. And I think in the next one, we're, you've, you've probably heard me talk enough. You're probably tired of, of hearing me talk. And so we're going we're gonna to grab our V-tool and we're going to outline all these lines and we're going to start removing wood. And, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to show you that whole process. Or I don't know if you want to sit there and watch me just remove a lot of wood, but you know it might be worthwhile to, to do that. And, and for me, it's soothing to watch somebody carve and might get a kick out of it. Anyway, um, end of video two, we'll move on. I'll clear all this stuff away. We'll get to carving here in just a little bit. Talk to you later.